These are the milestones of champions, the journeys of Canada's Paralympians. Josh Duick, Paralympic Alpine skier, adventurous, passionate, fearless. The former freestyle skier had a reputation for pumping the adrenaline. Now he's pushing the limits in the sport of sit skiing, proving that impossible is just a state of mind. Growing up in the mountain town of Kitimat, BC, Josh Duick had only one love. Freestyle skiing for me has always been about creative expression. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's really about connecting with the snow in a certain way and your personality really has an opportunity to come out and shine. It wasn't long before young Josh was racing with the BC freestyle team and competing on the North American circuit, a path that fueled his ultimate dream. One of the more common paths for people to follow a ski career is to become a member of the Canadian team and eventually ultimately going to the Olympics. So that's where the dream was born. A dream he worked hard to fulfill, but there was a problem. The sport was becoming too expensive to manage. So Josh was forced to put his Olympic dream on hold, but he wasn't giving up altogether on skiing. The next progression for me was to stay involved as a ski coach. But when I started coaching, I realized that was exactly where I was meant to be. It was a career move his friend Lacey thought was a good fit. Josh is amazing with, with kids, and so I think that's what really attracted uh, him to coaching. And perhaps, Lacey hoped, there was another attraction brewing. When I met Josh back in 2002, I would have to say he was a bit of a wild card. He was a skier, he had that free spirit, um, tons of fun, really easy to be around. The way I was living my life, I was a little bit crazy maybe, not super crazy, but a little bit wild. So when one of the kids he was coaching asked him to demonstrate a front flip, it seemed only natural then to just do it. Intuitively, I know I was going too fast and I was probably gonna overshoot the landing hill, but Ego was just like, dude, send it. I leaned out for this Superman front flip and I saw the landing hill come and go and ultimately over-rotated the front flip and overshot the landing hill and I was knocked unconscious on impact. The next thing Josh remembers from that day in 2004 was seeing tears in everyone's eyes as they looked down at his crumpled body. That was the uh, most painful moment for me. The kids that I was coaching saw me land on my chest and fold over like a scorpion. And that was hard for me because I think for the first time in my life, I became very aware that my actions had a direct impact on other people. But the doctor's next words were just the lifeline that Josh needed. The doctor in the emergency room looked at me in the eyes and he said, you're gonna rock the world in the wheelchair. I was overwhelmed, I just started crying. You know, I was like, oh man, you know, this is huge. You know, this is, uh, this is a big moment in my life. And I was like, oh. But having the skiing to look forward to was very powerful. And soon, in those dark days, another shining light. I got a call that he had been in a tragic accident and was never going to walk again. I just knew I had to go. I knew I had to go to Vancouver and I knew I had to be there. She walks in and it was literally as if an angel had entered the room and I was like, I was head over heels, I was in love. And so my accident seemed very secondary in compared to like, this girl that I want to be with is here with me right now. Lacey stayed by Josh's bedside and never left. We grew stronger every day and I think too, I really got to know Josh in the hospital. I got to know his family. I got to know his friends and the support of the community in Vernon was so huge. Soon Josh was back at home in Vernon but sitting idle just wasn't his style. Josh right away wanted to get back on snow. One day when we were out on the hill, someone approached him and said, Did you, have you ever thought about skiing competitively? And he was like, a light bulb kind of went off. Josh got hooked on the sit ski, a mono ski with a suspension seat. He hit the slopes and never looked back. That sense of freedom that I've always enjoyed about skiing came back exponentially. Before we knew it, Josh was competing on the BC team and the little light went off like, I can compete for my country again. And from there, Josh's childhood Olympic dream came full circle. 
You know, when I was first announced to the Paralympic team going into 2010, it was surreal, for sure. I was like, oh my, overload, sensory overload. Six years after being told he would have to rock the world in a wheelchair, Josh Dewitt does just that, winning a silver in slalom at the Vancouver 2010 Paralympic Games. But once the fanfare from Vancouver died down, Josh felt a malaise that he hadn't felt before. The day after the games, I was devoid of any goals. And, and that in itself, you know, snowballed this real downward spiral for me. So Josh set a new goal. Going upside down on the sit ski was something that I had dreamed of when I was first in the hospital. And it was probably my freestyle buddies are like, dude, you know, the sit ski thing sounds rad. Like, you think you can do freestyle tricks on it? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. While preparing to become the first person in the world to perform a sit ski backflip, Josh gets news that his good friend, freestyle skier Sarah Burke, just passed away. I thought, you know, we put a lot of energy into building this jump and getting the airbag set up. It was perfect, and she'd want us to go. It's hard to say, but life goes on, right? We need to keep living, and it was important that, uh, you know, we just kept moving forward with our goals and our dreams. It was the first time Josh would test his resolve to listen to his intuition something he hadn't done back in 2004. I remember coming into the jump and just kind of riding it and just being like, all right, all I got to do is be patient, patent, patient, 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 patient. As soon as I was upside down, I was like, oh my God, this is happening. I'm like, it's working, it's working. Not only did Josh make the jump, he also made the leap and married Lacey. Now he's added another first to his amazing journey, fatherhood. Connecting with the beauty of love and the beauty and the innocence of a, a little baby is incredible. There's nothing like it. We're lucky we got this perfect little girl and she brings so much joy to our life and it again continues to change everything that I know about this world we live in. As Josh trains for his second Paralympic Games in Sochi, his biggest fans are at his side. I'm just proud of how he's dealt with everything and how he continues to ins not only inspire me daily, but inspire everyone around him. When we return, a seven-time gold medalist, Paralympic skier, Brian McKeever.